Welcome to What the Flick Reviews, The Walking Dead. We're here of season six, episode 11. Tim, Francis, and Kim. Uh, so we saw Maggie come into her own as a shrewd negotiator, negotiator. And Abraham somehow have every awkward scene of the show. Yes. Let's get into it. And he has now scared me for life from ever eating pancakes because he used it as an analogy for sex. I, it took me a solid <laughs> minute to understand what he was talking about. Same with Glenn. He was very confused for quite a while. <laughs> Who uses biscuit? Like I never, I never heard that term before in my life, but so it was funny. But now I can't not quick. think about it. You're trying to make pancakes. You have pancakes this morning? No, for good reason. <laughs> yeah, that would be too many uh, carbs. Immoral. Um, so Abraham kind of gets dumped by Sasha, in the nicest way possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see that Jesus is a good guy. I mean, we've been kind of waffling. I'm sure comic readers could tell you the truth for sure. But yeah. as I said, I stopped reading the comics. Good job. Um, and we have them making negotiations with the other group and one guy making a very stupid move. Mm. Sure, the, yeah, the, the takeaways for this for me was weird love triangle that I never really expected to see come to fruition. Like, I, I didn't know what was going on between Rosita and Abraham because he didn't show as much scenes since the weird library sex scene. Mm -hmm. So I just assumed that things were a little bit frozen in that front until further notice. But then you see him, I guess, be put in a compromised situation to think to myself, Wow, I'm about to die. Who do I want to see right now? And then is I imagine that, is that his conflict? Like, I think that's what I'm it is. I'm close to death, so I don't know which woman I want to spend the rest of my potentially. Short well, life they gave with. you that heavy-handed uh, story from the guy that they saved from, I guess, the office yes. building, and so he was wife. like, "My wife died years ago, but in that moment, she was as real as day, right there." And yeah. then, of course, Abraham gets the life almost joked out of him, and he sees and hears someone. Yeah. So we don't know who it was. Cons you know, probably Sasha, because then at the very next moment. The necklace that Rosita that gives him is off of him, crushed in the mud. Yeah. So mm. I think that was symbolism. It. Yeah, it was one. Of, I think that was the overwhelming theme of the episode, which was an intelligent theme, but I don't think they executed it as well. It was like, okay, the previous episode we showed us what life is going to be like in this new modern world, as Rick's calling it. But now, what is what are, what is life going to be like for someone that needs to make significant choices, such as having babies, such as settling down, as Abraham asked Daryl, like. These are choices that, despite and amongst all the chaos, you still have to kind of make. Because if you do happen to progress in this world, you need to start making decisions that are going to be the best in terms of your happiness. Because there's no like choices in this world. Well, I could just maybe stay with her. We'll see where we go. Maybe we'll have an engagement party. No, this is it. Like you, this world can end at any moment. You got to go with the person that makes you happy and the person that you love. And that's why Glenn is like, why not have a baby at this point? Like things are going We're to shit to anyway. We're trying to build died. something. Yes. I, it was hard for me to understand where Abraham was coming from on this. I mean, I was more with Daryl, like, eh, or <laughs> Glenn, which is, yeah, of course I'm going to have a baby with my wife. Yeah. I love her. And But I think in the same time, is like Rick encompasses what I think Abraham's trying to get to. Like Rick finally kind of leans towards Carl and is like, all right, it just happened. I mean, just happened. But the way the way I'm sorry, it, Carl, you all it saw just us. happened. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, I just put I on just pants. Just finished. Super post coitus. I did not shower. Right now. Maybe you can tell. <laughs> oh no. Awful. But at the same time, it's like why? Like in, the, in real life situation, you wait to tell your son that maybe like a month down the line when you're serious about this person. Mm. But it's like why? What? What are we waiting for? I I obviously feel a certain way, which they. Heavily protruded in this episode. Whenever Rick was in any adversity, Michonne was just like, "Don't." Do oh, that. I love that when the woman That's like punched him lightly, yeah. and Michonne just went like, <laughs> knocked her out immediately. You don't do that. So I think that was the theme of it. It's like why wait, and it, you need to find out your decisions that you want to make in your life immediately because it could be changed. It could change at any point. I think the reason that that conflict in Abraham rings hollow for us is because we've never really seen a compelling scene between him and Sasha. Their, or him and their, Rosita. Scenes, yeah, maybe. their scenes are always so poorly written and always so heavy handed yeah. and like filled with this drama of like, do I even want to live? Why go on? I mean, yeah. I'm just always thinking why? Why yeah, now? Why? Why, why this? Why you? I don't understand. This isn't, it's not connecting. Yeah, and it's not as if we start to feel bad for Rosita because we haven't seen any sort of we meaningful don't know scene between her. them. It's like kind of like, okay, they did it a couple of times, but like, Fine, she, like she did give him a homemade gift. That he gave him a homemade something. gift. That was some sort of that sentiment. means a lot now. So when when they when they started those scenes, I didn't look into it as a, everyone was like, oh, they could be together, a relationship. I seen it as him trying to cling on to a reason to live, not necessarily her, but what she was teaching him, because both of them faced, or everyone faces those challenges in this world. But I think he was just looking at her as a symbol of what to live for, 
but not exactly her, if you get me, because there was no connect, there was no chemistry between them two. The best scene we seen with them was when they used to kind of make fun of each other. But and most people in the comments and 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 in, in the media are like, she's just acting bad. I think she's been given bad scenes to to kind of act. In, I if agree. You ask me. I agree. Mm. I don't know. I don't necessarily think she's a bad actress. I, I'm not even sure who you're talking about. Oh, Sasha. Uh, Sasha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, she's. I think she's a good actress. Um, moving on, we have the uh, the com the Hilltop Community. And oh, nicely named. I don't know. How do you feel about them? The the smarmy leader was was very smarmy. As soon as I seen those braces in this world, you don't need to wear braces. I wear braces every day. Are we? Are you guys call them suspenders or braces? Uh, oh. Clearly, we call them suspenders because I have no idea what you're so talking about. You're not I, wearing braces. Yeah, uh, well, we call them braces back home, right? So anyway, we understand this. He wants to give off a good image, but there's no need to waste your time putting on suspenders. Suspenders in the UK are what girls wear, by the way. That's why I don't like saying it without being awkward. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. Anyway, yes, he was very, well, you have to keep this place clean. And yes. You have to do this, and I'm just leveraging. I did not like how creepy he was being with Maggie. No. You mean um, Natalie? Oh, I'm sorry, no, Natalie. <laughs> oh, you're fine, Natalie. Bye. It's close. <laughs> close. Funny. Not really. Not really. Not Sweetie. at all. Sweetie. Yeah. Um, so I, w I did feel good about her coming back with a very shrewd counteroffer, which is you give us half of your stuff and you give it to us now. Yeah. Which is not something I've really seen from her before, but I like it. Yeah, it's, it's like we're going to save you from this protection racket with our own subtle protection <laughs> racket. Yep. We're going to save you in this protection racket taking the exact same thing that they'll take. Yeah, oh no, Negan's taking half of everything. We'll help you with that problem for half of everything. Because we handle things less rash than he does. Oh wait, Rick just stabbed one of your guys in the neck. Right the <laughs> um, he deserved what? it. Yeah. He attacked the leader and was trying Kim, to Kim, you're such a Rick him. sympathizer. He was trying to <laughs> no, kill no. him. You're, you're 100% you're right. I just like to right. make fun of the fact that like it's... If this were the apocalypse, I would have killed everyone. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> but it's just like, it, it, Tim makes a great point. It's funny because we all see it as like, but what are you actually getting? Like, you're, 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 The reasoning for not siding with Negan is because he killed one of your guys. Now, we haven't seen what he's done yet, so we can't really judge. But according to the things, he's beat someone to death. Rick just stabbed a guy, so it kind of equals itself out. But we know we what know Rick and them will do. Rick isn't going to come back and hold them onto this, you know, forever racket. Well, technically, that's them. not true because Rick did say to... Jesus at the start is like, we need food, we're, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Like he didn't, there was no bargaining at that point and Jesus was like, okay, well, I guess I need to either yeah, work magic or figure out. He didn't know out. who Jesus was at that point. I mean, at that point, they're still like pointing guns at him, threatening him, this is a trap, mm -hmm. you're tricking us. I think he's eventually learning to trust him and he's not unreasonable. I mean, he's able to see um, different kinds well, of Well, this is rationale. a new love struck, Rick. This is a new wow. swoony Rick who's just watched The Notebook and is understanding that there's a lot more to life. But can still get, you know, jugular blood all over him yes. and be totally unfazed. I love how it's not a different Rick. Every scene where Rick goes completely insane, they do so well with placing the blood accurately on his face. Like, he'll stab someone and the blood will drip down his face and then he stabs this guy and his beard is now covered in blood. Wouldn't this make him more insane, though, if he has someone to protect more, even though it's mm. Michonne who obviously doesn't need anyone protecting her yeah. uh, for the most point? It seems like he's just got more to lose, right? So he's going to be a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, decisive and even more rash if you think that's possible for Rick. Like, again, it's we know that he had to do that because he stabbed creepy guy wearing braces or suspenders. But nonetheless... He he still had to take those actions. Like the guy with the the guy, what's his name? I'm just gonna refer to him in that name without Gregory. Going. Gregory. So he's Gregory is the leader of the so, hilltop. Okay, so he had to do that. But again, it just reminded us that this new modern world, Rick, that has these words of wisdom for Carl, still knows how to take care of himself in this world and is still willing to do that regardless of how he's changing mm -hmm. in his motions. Um, it actually didn't sink into me what he's doing until they did the ne on the next week of The Walking Dead when he's explaining everyone. Hey, he would have found us eventually. We have to kill him now. Yeah. That made more sense to me than the way that it was Sort of wrapped earlier. in the guise of the Seven Samurai story. It's like, yeah, we're you're helping this group and that's a thing, but he wants to kill Negan. Yes. He's I would if he, I knew there was a threat out there trying to, you know, brutally murder my people. So what I think the show is doing well as of right now is we really don't know what sort of threat Negan is. Mm -hmm. He's got this mysterious air to him. We've seen his little motorcycle search party. I'm willing to guess he's a terrible threat. <laughs> right, but we don't know to what extent. Does yeah. he have an army of 500 saviors or are there only 10 of them left? How big are their fortifications? Or, are G or is Jesus' group working in sync with them and luring Rick's team 
to the like, as bait. Oh. Was I wrong that's, to trust uh, Jesus? That's interesting. No, I don't believe that for a second. But, but could it happen, or is it is the Walking Dead past doing something like that? I don't think so. I mean, it's done, it's been done in before. To be fair, I laughed out loud when I saw the guys with the spears on top of the wall. <laughs> Put down your guns. Uh, no, I don't think I will. Unless you're Achilles from from Troy, I'm not scared. You can launch yeah. a spear <laughs> that far. Who yeah, else wants to negotiate? Free spears. Yeah. Um, yes, how did we feel about the end of this episode? With the, the baby ultrasound being passed around, Abraham still having his issues. Um, uh, We'd also saw Maggie say uh, somewhat poignantly, which is we are going to lose something. Which means yes. we are going to lose someone. Oh, no Someone's doubt. Someone's gone in the no, next no. couple episodes. And, and that's, again, it's going to come back to whether or not the community is going to be willing to to go all in. Because we've seen this transition with them helping helping Rick when he went out and took on Million Walkers. But is it still in their memory that they executed a plan to remove walkers from coming to the area, which resulted in numerous deaths? Like, mm -hmm. So are they still going to trust him as easily as they did before since they stood behind him and helped him? Target the walkers, or are they going to go into something that is simply a myth, like you mentioned? Like, we don't know what Negan is posing at the moment. We know based on what rumors are that he's a horrible human being, mm -hmm. but are the, is the community going to be willing to go ahead and put everything at risk for something they don't know is actually there yet? That's the question. To me, the climax is going to look a lot like this image behind us of Morgan, versus Morgan Rick. and Rick Ooh. on different sides. Yeah. Who's backing who? Will Morgan stick to his guns and say, we can't just attack these people unprovoked. They've never done anything to us. All we have are the stories of these other people. Yeah. I mean, forgetting about the motorcyclist that got blown up in the road. But. Yeah. And are we, are we done with uh, the wolves? Are we done with them completely? They're like not... They're they're not as big of an organized. Yeah, I don't think I we'll think. ever see the wolves again. You don't think so? Because the the guy that got killed in Alexandria was the wolf leader. Oh. As well, as far as the credits. Would I have mean, I just assumed that they might like we never really seen them take up any more of a role. So I didn't know if they were potentially going to come back and pose another threat. I think they were just a little appetizer for the saviors. For the appetizer for the saviors. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's that question. That's what I believe you. Thanks, man. Trustworthy, man. Because well. two guys with glasses trust each other. Yeah, we're very oh, trustworthy. Good. So I'm glad that I could talk about this show with you two brothers today. <laughs> Get some glasses. Do we have yeah. any? I have LASIK. Nice. Do, do we have any final thoughts? Uh, I'm just anxious to see how they take it. I feel like this episode should have been actually named filler episode. Like the one previous. It was a filler episode. The one episode, episode the one previous was interesting. Like we liked the one before because it, it kind of took had, a positive spin. We started spin. the mid-season with a boom. Boom, boom. Maybe one of the best episodes we've ever seen. I would agree. Uh, then we have a happy episode, mm -hmm. which is atypical, but okay. And now we have a typical filler episode. Yeah. It's exposition. We meet all the players. Mm -hmm. We had to we had to meet the people at the hilltop, see what they were about. We had to establish everybody's motivation. We need food. We need guns. We're on Negan. So yeah. yeah, we're in a place now where the the rest of the season, what six episodes left, five, is, five is 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 ready to fewer. unfold. Yes. Is, is the the whole impetus as to what's going to happen is like right before us. I think we're going to meet Negan next episode. Mm. I, think I can't a, wait to meet him. I think a main character is going to die next episode. I could. I think it's time. I think someone mentioned it, and I'm like, it's it's bound to happen. We didn't mm. get as significant a death in the opening mid season finale we didn't. because we just got the. Well, it was significant in terms of we like we got people that we knew dying, but it was no one of the core group that's that's left at this it's point. It's been a long time since anyone in the core group has yeah, died. Who I do mean, we... we've seen Alexandrians fall, and we kind of care. I don't but... want to predict, but I I don't know. Do I you could... really think it's going to be a main character? I, we've got an awful lot of character development out of Abraham and Maggie recently. I was going to say, I mean, that would be horrendous, surely. They can't, I don't I mean, want to see them... Maggie go. I know, that was I awful. <laughs> when things are tragic. Ooh, I love it when Ooh. terrible things happen. Oh, my well, God. Well, stay tuned next week when we report on when terrible things happen. <laughs> <laughs>